Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Bloom the Podcast. Thank you all so much for tuning in to yet another episode. If you guys are new, I'm your host and I'm here with the one and only co-host. Ashley, what's up? And we are here with two special guests. <laughs> we have Aaliyah and baby Rory. How you guys doing? Doing good. <laughs> Super <laughs> glad to have you guys on the show today. If you guys are OG bloomers and you do recognize Aaliyah, she's been on a couple different episodes. One we did about opinions versus wisdom. And then another one we did about relying on the Lord during trials. So she's been on a couple episodes. I so hope you guys are happy to have her back just like we are. And we have a super fun episode for you guys lined up today that I think she'll have some good insight on. <laughs> so um, before we jump into that, um, obviously, hopefully, hopefully you guys have been staying tuned with our previous episodes. Um, we had a couple, we had a part one and part two um, about dating and courting just drop uh, the last two weeks. So make sure you guys go check that out. And then... Um, yeah, we're excited for this episode. So I'm going to pass it to you first just so Leah can show you guys all that she's up to right now because she is quite the busy bee. So what can the people look for uh, on your end? Um, I would say if you want to see what I'm most currently doing, I would follow me on Instagram, mm-hmm. which is just Aaliyah Matheson. And I just post about biblical stuff, theology, culture, family, um, pretty much similar stuff that you guys talk yeah. about on here and then i have mm-hmm. my own podcast which is called the alia matheson show and i also have an instagram for that so if you're into politics and pretty much anything controversial <laughs> i'd follow that one and we'll make sure to leave all the links for you down in the description so that all of bloom nation can go ahead and check you out so with that all that being said we're going to jump straight into today's topic which is going to be as the title suggests when you guys clicked on the video online dating <laughs> Something that kind of um, perfectly stems off our last couple episodes, I feel like, because I feel like online dating is probably not something that most of the courtship scene would probably want to do. Um, So this is kind of an interesting segue into this topic. So I'm going to pass the floor to you first, Aaliyah, and I'm going to just ask your general thoughts. When people say, when people talk about online dating, what is your initial thoughts about online dating? Whether it's good, bad, in the middle, like what are your general thoughts? I think good for them. <laughs> 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 like you're putting yourself out there. I think mm-hmm. people need to put themselves out there. And especially if you're from a small church or there's not a lot of solid options in your your general area then why not as many avenues as you can put yourself out there i'm for doing okay okay what about you ashley um i i feel like it's kind of the same thing like if you're doing it that's cool i wouldn't necessarily do it myself but i would say if i was older and there was still like i was like 30 and i was like i just feel like i'm not meeting anyone then that's something i'd look into but as far as like, I think it's more depends on the age, I guess. Like for younger ages, I don't know if I'd necessarily be like, you should online date, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's mm-hmm. just not my first like, you should go online, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. I I agree with both of you guys generally. I would say, <laughs> Do I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah. here's the thing. There you go. Here's the thing. <laughs> because I definitely think it does, ch- your experience is going to be tailored uh, or your, I should say, your answer is going to be tailored to your experience. And obviously my experience may not be the most common experience, but then again, I'm not entirely sure. Um, that's why we're having the conversation. But from my experience, I don't find it to be very, an, a very effective way of really finding a partner that's going to be suitable long term. I feel like it could be easy to kind of just fly around and talk to a bunch of different people but never have anything really materialize. And I think that's because online dating leans to a very superficial basis of determining who you want to uh, be with. And I think there's a lot of interesting things that happen in online dating that can kind of make people not make the best decisions. (laughs) (laughs) So I don't know if you would have any, like, because you obviously haven't done it. I know you have tried it. So if, when you were on it, and obviously mm-hmm. you're married now, but when you were on it, what were what was your experience like? So I pretty much tried like every single online <laughs> dating app that existed, <laughs> just except because Tinder, I'm guys. like go except big Tinder. or go home. Yeah, I don't. I didn't have a Tinder. <laughs> I was gonna say, wait a minute. <laughs> I had to think about it. <laughs> 
<laughs> but um i was also very intentional with my questions and i yeah. had a like game plan i didn't just go on and like well if they're nice you know yeah. so so the first question i would ask is what church do you go to and that kind of tells you a lot about them mm-hmm. off the gate right but i i honestly didn't have some like great online experience like mm-hmm. all of the people i met were whack pretty much <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but i also have lots of friends who've gotten married online so i think it just mm-hmm. depends on your age i think there's probably better options for older people because they're more serious i that, was like mm-hmm. 20 yeah <laughs> so the guys that were i was talking to were also younger and they weren't that serious right or they were i also it depends on location because i lived in la and yeah. of course that's like everybody's an actor and an entertainer a musician or whatever the chaches yeah. <laughs> so a lot of them were like hillsong christian types mm. and okay. just super charismatic or just vain into themselves mm. um and then you had the other guys who were just ugly <laughs> okay so <laughs> you know okay so this is where it gets interesting right because I think we've had plenty of conversations, at least I know we have off the mic, about Mm. the importance of attraction. Mm -hmm. And I think when it comes to (laughs) online dating, this is where it gets kind of difficult for Christians to kind of balance that line because the I think one of the biggest Christian lies we tell ourselves when it comes to dating is that attraction doesn't matter. However, when it comes to online dating, that's pretty much 95% on what we're basing our decisions off of, if we're being completely honest. You're going through... You're swiping left and right on faces Mm -hmm. and you're hoping that one of the faces you like swipes back on you, basically. So when it comes to that, what's the ratio of like how hard are you judging someone's looks versus like it could be a really nice Christian person? You know what I mean? I don't don't think it matters. Yeah, because I feel like you kind of do that in real life. Like you're going to look at someone. You're like, am I going to talk to them? Because are they cute or not? You know, it's kind of you instantly judge everyone based on their looks. So whether you're doing it on your phone or doing it in person, it's kind of the same. Because you're going to talk to them either way. And if they're whack, it doesn't matter how attractive they are. Are you? Well, not if they're ugly. (laughs) But that doesn't matter anyways in real life or online. (laughs) If you're ugly, I'm not going to pursue you either way. But I think with real life, there's a realism factor. I think with online dating, it's kind of the paradox of choice, right? Like you're scrolling through, you see someone that like isn't ugly, but like isn't super attractive either. And you're like, hmm, I could do better. There's a million people on this app. And then you swipe. And then you repeat that process a bunch of times because there's always another option. There's always going to be another person to swipe on. Doesn't that kind of depend on the person though? Because I feel like if you saw someone, you're like, oh, like, okay. Then you kind of like look into their bio and see like if that person has like everything in common with you, you're not going to be like, I could do better. If you're not being a superficial person and you're actually like, oh, I like looking for someone who I could have a friendship with as well as date, you know? Mm -hmm. So you can tell who's into themselves and vain and Even if they're super hot, if they, all their pictures are them shirtless at the gym, <laughs> I'm not swiping on them just yeah. based on that. But I do. Or I mean, I get your point. in their photo. Yeah. <laughs> we don't do cats here. I judge people by their cats <laughs> if they have one. Church, what church do you go to and do you have a cat? <laughs> yeah. Because it's interesting between men and women as well because men and women on dating apps are completely different, right? Obviously. Mm. And one of the interesting mm. things about online dating is the database of users in general. So men make up more than 70% of the users on online dating apps, Mm. which automatically makes it such a competitive market, if you will, quote unquote, for (laughs) the men, for the women. So it's basically way over half the demographic. Not enough women for the men. Well, I think (laughs) it's easier for women in real life, right? Like if a guy is going out and getting shot down by a bunch of girls, it's going to be more conceivable, right, for him to go online and potentially message a bunch of girls and hopefully one of them messages him back. That's kind of the idea, I would think, where girls are constantly getting approached and they can kind of filter through, okay, I like this guy, I don't like this guy, maybe him. But I wouldn't say all girls are kind of like Yeah. Well, not all, well, no one's all, I think you know. if with anything... And this isn't the PC answer, but I'm not about PC PC here, y'all. If you're ugly, you're not going to get approached. Girl or guy? Yes. Well, you could. I mean, there's exceptions to every rule, but generally speaking. Or you'd be probably approached by another ugly person. Well, yeah. The likelihood of that. You have to be realistic about what you can actually get and who you are. And whether you're online or in person, if you're not attractive, 
your hopes of finding someone is going to be lower than someone who's attractive regardless. Just right. facts. And I, <laughs> I think mean, you can also, hate me for it, but it's the truth. No, it, it's true. And <laughs> that's no why no followers left. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, glad I it, could come on your show. <laughs> well, the thing is, it's not, that's not necessarily a wrong thing to say. It's, it's true in most respects. And I think that's the problem with it is most people aren't honest about that. And that's where it's a lot of disappointment and a lot of discouragement is because people have these false realities on what they think it's going to be like, whether that's in person or online. And that becomes the very discouraging part. Well, I would say to your point about ugly people, I feel oh, like wow. so horrible, like <laughs> even using the term, but why don't you just say less unattractive attractive. people, yes, less attractive for unattractive people. I still, th- they have a better shot at finding people in real life because when you're talking to someone like they could be like, okay, like this person, I was like a pretty legit personality like i like being around this person and then it it makes attraction grow we won't talk about that with donovan because donovan and his attraction growing is <laughs> he doesn't well agree no with that. i would agree with you though because okay. your personality can add a lot so and right. that's what i'm saying if you're just swiping you're like okay right. this person nope and then you swipe yeah so Versus i think that's if why you're like at a small church right. or something and you are very godly and you have a lot to bring to the table no one's going to find that out from your online profile. right your best chance is if you're ugly go to a small church where there's zero options <laughs> and be really awesome <laughs> <laughs> and all the desperate people will be like he's not that bad <laughs> or you, that's just for guys and girl well yeah girls too <laughs> It goes for everybody. Yeah, because that's, well, that was the other interesting thing. Because not only is, do men make up more than 70% of the database on online dating apps, men typically swipe right on over 60% of women profiles, mm-hmm. where women only swipe right on just under 5% of men profiles. So there clearly is a very distinguishable gap there on what women are looking for and what the men are offering on online dating. And I think that is a disparity that needs to be talked about as well. Which is funny because didn't you say that girls? Oh, I guess that proves your point. You said girls are more picky. 100%. (laughs) Most guys are not that picky. Guys like to play picky in real life. They're like, oh, I only go for this. But in actuality, it's a lot more than 60% that the guys would be more than happy dating. And they're just not honest about that. But that's a whole nother topic. But the problem is, is what are we actually looking for as a society? That's what we need to kind of drill in on because I feel like online dating doesn't show and doesn't highlight what people should actually be looking for. Right. And I see that is why I would say online dating is for an older person who's just like, I'm so done being single. Like I want to get married right now <laughs> because when you're young, you know, like you get to know people and make those friendships with people. Like once you want to do it, the more natural way of like, getting to know someone naturally People talk about the natural way but honestly <laughs> even if you meet them in person what are you doing texting them yeah most likely or a phone or, call like if they go to your church or, though you're gradually getting to know them yeah. like in person you yeah know? the natural way typically is like oh you join a bible study and you see them every week and then right. you go like, hang you out see after the way church they are, and, or like with other people or you know just but then you have to deal with the whole let's hang out well see As, they should let's be that. friends <laughs> and then it, i think what i liked about online dating is you know the person you're talking to wants to date <laughs> like that alone would you well, say to me i was say just that. like maybe maybe that's how it is for the guys but i'll tell you what from my experience and i don't know if maybe this is new because you were on there a while ago but nowadays they yeah, have yeah, was well like it was a while it was ago. at least four years ago I mean, that's not that long. A lot has changed in four years, I'll tell you that. But I think one of the things that's interesting is they've added a lot of new categories for what people are looking for. So a lot of people that I was scrolling through, what they were looking for in a relationship was a lot of, I want to meet a friend or people to hang out with or casual date. Yeah, or like that was all in their these bio. Isn't that, that weird? don't hint, like even if this person does message you, that they want something serious. But what apps are you using? I used Christian Mingle. I've tried Coffee Meets Bagel. And I've also tried a newer one. I think it's called Upward. Um, which is kind of like the Christian version of Tinder. I don't know if anyone in the audience has heard of this, but it was a very interesting experience and I only talked to one person. (laughs) So, yeah. I I also feel like it's just really hard to find like people that are actually like Christian. Like everyone is like 
really watered down or like mm-hmm. Catholic or like something else. Like there's barely any people who shared the same beliefs as you, at least judging from what I saw of like when you were. on. Yeah, because there. there's a lot of denominations and not that all the denominations are bad, but I, I don't think a lot of people necessarily understand what each denomination means. Like there was a lot of Catholic people that were actually uh, Pentecostals. And then there were like <laughs> other people that were like you could just see from the way they were describing their testimony or their faith that there wasn't necessarily a clear grasp of a the gospel and b what their denomination actually is so it's very tricky and like you said Aaliyah before like being intentional with the questions like that's the most important thing because that weeds out people real yeah because i feel like i had options left and right and immediately when you just ask them that you can gauge and be like nope nope (laughs) and Mm -hmm. you can quickly go through people as opposed to wasting so much time because i feel like a lot of people don't like online dating because they feel like they're wasting time talking to people and then they find out they're you know whatever Mm -hmm. but if you find out what church do you go to that'll give you a very very good indication of their at least what kind of teaching they're getting Mm -hmm. let alone what they're what kind of person they are right and And then like if you ask like what's your testimony Oh, that's a good, that's a, that's a People very good People should be one. asking that anyway. That's my 100%. problem with today's society. Nobody asks that anymore. They're yeah. like, you're on your like 14th date and they're like, so I guess I should probably ask. <laughs> yeah. It's a very weird uh, response from Christians. A lot of times when you ask them their testimony, they like, don't even know how to answer you. Like they've never given it before. It's like, this should be one of the most exciting things to tell people. Like your testimony is amazing. We want to hear about it, but I, I think the agree problem more. in general is there's regardless of whether you're online or in real life there's so many weak christians yeah Mm -hmm. so it's it's not that there's more online there it's just more obvious because you're going through more people Mm -hmm. but i mean the reason that i was online is because i felt like there were no solid guys around me and that was me going to a church with ten thousand people yeah Mm -hmm. so like it's not like i had a small pool or was even coming from a small church yeah it just was all the guys around me i didn't feel were that spiritually mature or people i'd want to see a church of ten thousand though was almost like online dating it's that same paradox it's like i can do better so i it's (laughs) that same paradox and i think that's where people get stuck and it makes it even harder online because in person it's kind of hard to finesse actually talking to multiple people at once or at least it's harder on online dating you can have six seven eight chats going at once so and nobody will know <laughs> yeah it's like it's like trying to watch eight different movies at the same time you're not going to be able to follow one plot if you're constantly jumping from movie to movie and i think that's what online dating kind of does to people is it doesn't let them really involve themselves with one person to actually vet them properly because they're st- constantly getting pinged and blown up by other messages they're like comparing you to their next they're yeah not always it depends <laughs> again always. it depends it on depends. how good looking they are yeah it depends on well, that's mainly for the females i think because guys aren't usually well, even guys up, too if they're a hot guy they're gonna get hit up it goes it, both it ways depends. yeah yeah so i think <laughs> if you're super attractive you're gonna of course have more options but that's gonna be in real life that's true and yeah. they're gonna have people fighting for you in real life and so it's honestly the same thing it's just one's virtual and one's yeah yeah. real life but you're likely to experience this both things the same way depending on how attractive you are yeah right yeah my concern with online dating would be less of like the stuff we're talking about and more of like i feel like for me i'd just be scared of safety things like even after going on a date or two i'd still be like you're still some like rando that i just met the other day that nobody knows that i know like yeah. we don't have any mutual friends like you're literally just a random person and no one can vouch for you well mm. there are some <laughs> cases where i met people and they had mutual friends or they went to a church one person i met went to my church but i had just never met them <laughs> well, i think that's kind of the idea of some yeah. of the ones we there are like i know there's one i think it's called cross paths which basically uses a facebook-based algorithm See, I to feel like that's a safer try and like correlate route. people you might know or may have seen or like go to a church near yeah. you or something like that but that's also just don't route. be an idiot <laughs> like, yeah don't go to a cave to go hiking on your first date See, all the <laughs> like, girls are like hiking like that's what i want to do on our day i'm like you're trying to die literally like, all of go you. to a public coffee shop bring your gun <laughs> we're not in texas anymore. if you're in texas bring your gun if you're in texas if you're in guys. california still bring your gun <laughs> yeah and bring uh, a butter knife <laughs> bring your pepper spray yeah like how does that work like do you bring someone and like they just and have someone know shop? where you are <laughs> 
<laughs> have someone know where you are have your friends sit in the corner you know yeah yeah just be do don't that. be dumb yeah no 100 percent. i think there's there's definitely a lot of safety things to take don't into drive with them necessarily on their first date meet them there mm-hmm leave in your own car but see you say first date but i'm like even after like the fifth date with some stranger that's anybody that really is anybody that's though. anybody that's you could meet them at church and they could be a rapist you have no idea that's yeah. true i don't know it just feels different though i mean not speaking come from coming from a church of ten thousand. you know like a normal church <laughs> i mean if you grew up with them but even then i mean you don't know anybody honestly yeah. this is true you really don't this is true but I mean, it is different than just walking up to someone on the street and being like let's hang out you know yeah. it's, it's slightly different I don't know. Yeah. I married Brian after six weeks and I never met him in my he's life. He's so. just some rando. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's still a rando, He was man. literally a rando. He was. So. He was, which is interesting um, because that's one of the other things that I think about as well is like how, how soon do you like really put yourself into the situation where you're like really going out with this person seriously? Like what was your thought process and like how many dates do you give someone online assuming you go on on an online date with someone like what's what does that look like because i feel like there's not a lot of and i know everything is situational but i feel like there's so many question marks when it comes to meeting a quote-unquote random person on the internet and then marrying them yeah <laughs> well it depends on the person and how they are for me i was always gauging where they're at spiritually and all of the people that i actually went out with that were online with the exception of like one the one who actually went to our church mm -hmm. <laughs> um I feel like they were, I was like testing them still and they kept like failing. So <laughs> be wary guys. For They're testing people, you. It <laughs> took longer be, or it was like more of a process, but I never dated any of them longer than like a month yeah. before yeah. I could figure out that they were either not mature, s scandalous <laughs> or just trash. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's so, I mean, I think, yeah, like what, like what you said before is still range too. Like there's going to be the same people online and in person, the hard part is just being wise and filtering out those people and being honest about it. It honestly doesn't take you longer than a month for anybody. That's true. Like I genuinely believe whether you meet them online or in person, you can gauge if you're attracted to them, if they're solid within a month. Yeah. If, if you're if you want to keep dating them is what I mean. If not you're super like to marry them. Yeah. yeah. If but do you want I do I want to be in a relationship with them? You can know that in a month. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, for 100%. sure. 100. Can know that in a week. <laughs> Especially with how much access we're giving to people, and that's one of the things that online dating, I think, brings to the forefront as well. Is not only are you seeing them and like you can, it's basically dating someone off their Instagram profile. Like you're mm -hmm. getting so much exactly access to is. them from such an early start that it kind of like almost jumpstart you into a random, like, I don't even know how to phrase it, but like it pushes you into a different realm versus if you were to meet someone in person for the first time. It's a different, because people put out what they want you to see. And that's exactly. what online dating is. It's exactly everything you want someone to specifically think of when they see you, but that's not what people actually think of when they see you. <laughs> Which makes me rabbit trail. Sorry to rabbit trail on this, but that is such an interesting point based off the way that people build their profiles. Yeah. Because it's technically quote unquote your best foot forward right right some of the profiles you see you're like what was the thought process behind this <laughs> <Your> best foot. <laughs> they yeah. have no fee <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but that's why they're online because they can't get any action <laughs> but even some uh, of them a lot of they them just anyway. like they're not trying yeah, sometimes it kind of just feels like they're there. They are, they and take a like, picture of like their eye and they're like, come date me. But that's also a thing. Is they're like, I don't want to look like I'm trying too hard. Cause I it, don't really care about this. Because it's become so cliche to try. It really has. And like to your point, what you just said, they don't want people to think that you care about it. People don't want to be perceived as wanting to be in a relationship. And it's so weird. They like, don't want to seem desperate. Yeah. But it's like, not desperate to want to be in a relationship. And it's so backwards and it hurts your chances so much because if you're just so blase, like, oh, I don't really care. Then the person who really wants to be in a relationship is going to look at you and be like, nah, they're not serious. And then be on to the next. So people really have to be careful with the way they project themselves to other people because you may just be hurting your chances, even if you are super serious. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, people just got to be careful. Yeah. But I would ask, too, just so that for the people listening, because obviously I don't think we would say online dating is a bad thing. Mm -mm. So what are some things people can be doing if they are online dating to maybe increase their chances or have a better go of it if they are running into a lot of um, maybe not so solid people or maybe having trouble filtering out uh, solid people? What would you say to those people? 
Well, start with good questions. Okay. First mm-hmm. off, so again, what church do you go to? What's your testimony? Tell me about like your daily devotions. Like mm-hmm. very pointed forward questions because who cares? Like just get to it. <laughs> There's no yeah. point in trying to small talk a person online. Like get to the deep stuff quickly. <laughs> Mm-hmm. and weed them out yeah. <laughs> and get to the small stuff later mm-hmm. um, or on the first date. Um, I would also say if you're trying to get people like maybe widen your reach, mm. be open to meeting people out of state or yeah. further away from Leave where you the live. country. <laughs> <laughs> a Nigerian prince. <laughs> ride from across the seas. <laughs> but no, but seriously, like widen your scope. Mm-hmm. Um and actually like look at people's profiles like what do they say are they and like can you feel that they care about the things you care about from their profile because if they do you'll know if they care about jesus you're gonna see a lot about jesus in their profile (laughs) not i love jesus at the very end right (laughs) i mean you can gauge by people's profile descriptions how solid they are a lot of the times right mm-hmm. depend just even how they phrase certain things mm-hmm. um also are they modest guys or girls or yeah. are they sitting there with their boobs out and whatever or their shirtless gym photos like yeah if they are they're probably not that solid let's yeah. be honest because if that's their best foot that. then that's so sauce. that's <laughs> what i'm saying you gotta really be like it's such a good platform because not that you want to judge entirely off a couple photos but you it is a very good indicator on where this person is at same with instagram honestly mm-hmm. it's a very good indicator on what someone's all about yeah because yeah. they could be ha- talking all about jesus and if they're in their little tutu and <laughs> like <laughs> like come on <laughs> yeah no 100 percent. and it's all i say that because there's always these girls on instagram that are like proverbs blah 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 31 um she laughs without fear of the future and in her she's bikini. in like a bikini it's like <laughs> yeah they just throw any kind oh, of okay random then. verse behind there you know. what does this have to do with your butt cheeks <laughs> <laughs> just curious uh, <laughs> i just want to know the context <laughs> i mean yeah it's it's wild out there yo it's wild um, um what about what what would you say um I agree with everything she said, but I'd also say just see people as like actual human beings. Like Mm. this is like not a flipping game. (laughs) Like these people are like actual humans, not just like it gets so robotic, like swiping. You're like, eh, ew, eh." like, you know, you get so like gross and entitled sometimes when you're doing it that way. Like really think about it. Like this is an actual person with actual like personality. And, like, maybe I could like this person. Like, don't just be so superficial and, like, just look at the picture and, like, swipe up. Like, even if the person's not the hottest person you've seen, look at their bio. Like, look at them. Yeah. I'd like to add one, too. (laughs) Yeah. Especially for single people out there who've been single a while. Don't go on late at night. (laughs) Because you will see thirst traps, even in the Christian apps. And you don't want to fall for any of these thirst traps and then wind up in a ditch <laughs> well i'll say this literally or some of them aren't even really traps they're just straight up calls like i've seen profiles there where the bro- profile literally said i'm a stripper and i was like this is an interesting spot for you to be they're like church of christ stripper. yeah so if yeah. you're in a bad mood and it's late at night and you're on your dating app and stripper girls messaging you just be mindful just be vigilant fellas be <laughs> see vigilant. there's a lot of temptation on that that app i feel just like do it there's in the too much time. temptation someone just looking for a hookup everywhere everywhere you swipe Well, that's one of the things that has made it very toxic and that's what i feel like a lot of people in the courting uh scene are scared of is because it da- dating apps are primarily boosted off hookup culture that's what they've created these right. days so you meet someone you go out for dinner you sleep with them and then you kind of just figure out what you want to do from there but there's right. no real um structure behind it yeah you're not like you're more likely you're not gonna really meet a stripper at church yeah so it's there's a little you're less likely Depends what kind of church you yeah you're less likely you know what i'm saying but, but yeah all that yeah, 100 i would agree with both of you guys i think like what you said is really important each per- there these are real people and i would say with that being said engage with people i think we're so hesitant to just like ignore messages and like just kind of be very flippant about it, but like really engage with people and make the most of 
the situation that you're put in. If you are able to have good conversation with people, maybe it be, can become even a ministry opportunity for maybe talking to someone who isn't a very strong Christian or maybe doesn't really understand the gospel. Mm-hmm. They just associate as Christian. You know how many times yeah. I wound up just using it as an evangelism platform? Yeah, I remember honestly. that. I remember that. Like the amount of people I evangelized to just from these online dating sites. Oh, another thing I would add too is um, like not ghosting people. I think that's mm. just so rude. <laughs> yeah, like if you don't words. like somebody and you went on a date with them, just tell them you don't like them. See, it's like the lack of humanity there. They're like, ah, <laughs> next. Yeah, they're not even right. worth it's, just a message. Being like, hey, even I a text you. message. <laughs> like, yeah, it's so like cold. it was nice going out, but I'm not really interested. That's okay. Like it's fine. You're but I think be okay. that's the thing is people <laughs> drop off all the time where it's so yeah. normalized. Like just never hearing from someone again is just like something we've. Well, come they're to like, expect. I'm never gonna see them again. Like, there's no it's repercussion. Whatever. That's the problem. There's yeah. no repercussion for treating someone terribly online. Mm-hmm. You can just no one's gonna know you're a jerk. Yeah, no one's gonna private. know. <laughs> they don't have any mutual friends. There's no backlash on you for being, uh, for not having common decency. And I think that's something. Right. Don't be that person. Like, be the person who stands out in that way of like really caring about the person, communicating well, and being clear with what your intentions are. Because so many people I've met and talked to that get led on and get led down this path and that get completely ditched by somebody. And then they're just left in a terrible emotional state of just like, well, what's wrong with me? Mm -hmm. And that's not where you want to be. And that's where I would kind of add our closing up question is for the people that have been on there for a while and are maybe discouraged or, you know, are thinking like, am I going to be single forever? Or maybe don't get that many matches on there. What encouragement would you give to those people? And I've been in that position myself. Um, I would say the the thing we always have to remember is whether you're online dating and you're really hot even or you're, you know, going to a church of 10,000 where there's a bunch of options, you're not going to find anyone until God says so, <laughs> like yeah. either way. Mm-hmm. And so you know online dating whatever you do like it doesn't really matter when god's timing is right and he drops a person out of the sky that's when it's gonna happen so cliche but right though <laughs> it is true though it i is mean true. you're I not mean, gonna it, find it's your responsibility god to so. go out and we did, talked about <laughs> right, that the right, other right, day right, like right. it is your responsibility to put yourself in a position to find someone but as but long as you're doing all that god's yeah. not gonna provide until he says so mm-hmm. so you just have to ride the way keep doing what you're doing and don't lose hope because yeah. god will do it when he's ready or he mm-hmm. may never and that, that's his plan for you and it's still good so right. you have hope either way 100 <laughs> what would you say leah hmm I would say don't like don't surrender yourself to one avenue of finding somebody Mm -hmm. because people are like they're oh well I'm online so I don't have to try in this area it's like go everywhere go big or go home (laughs) (laughs) you know go to every don't just make it so like weird (laughs) like be interested in things have hobbies do hobbies meet people that way go to different churches bible studies like just put yourself out there because you can't just be in one avenue and expect something to pop off like you have to be also interesting and have interesting things to talk about so if you're just Mm -hmm. like all your entire life revolves finding somebody and nothing else and you have zero interest zero hobbies on yourself you don't do anything (laughs) else at all with yourself when they do talk to you they're gonna be like this person's so boring yeah like what are you doing just in general are you out there having fun living your best not living your best life but like you know what i mean kind of of. of. like do you have a mission that you're on that they're gonna be like wow they're cool i want to do what like join them in their fun party it's like when (laughs) 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 it's like let me party life folks party life it's like if you see two groups of people right right? you come to a party you see two groups of people one group is like having the time of their life having fun like talking laughing and then you see somebody else and they're just like in their corner sulking Mm -hmm. That person might have a great personality, right? If they were put in a proper environment to like bring them out of their shell and thrive or whatever. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to go to that person. You're going to gravitate towards the person who looks like they're actually doing something and having fun. Right. So if you're like that in real life and you're just like a shell of a human being (laughs) and you're miserable and have nothing going for you, of course, even when you do get action, it's going to be like, well, this person is boring. And I think what you mean by like having fun is just having a life yeah of your own (laughs) just have a life do things like don't just be that person that lives with their parents and doesn't have a job or even if they don't have a job i mean if you're single though like 
I'd suggest getting a job. (laughs) But if you're, you know, if you literally have nothing going for you, you're quiet, you're kind of shy, like you don't really talk. It's like no one's, no one's going to look at you, bro. Yeah, no, that's true. That's actually what I was (laughs) going to say. Getting a match isn't enough. It's yeah. keeping a match. That's the problem. That's in, for most and people. that's in real life and online. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It's just like really work on adding value to your to your own life, and that comes mm-hmm. from a various amount of different things. Mainly strengthening your walk with the Lord. Make sure your walk is strong. Make sure you're growing. Make sure you're fighting sin. Make sure you're doing all these things that the Lord commands you to do. So that way you can actually be the person that you're looking for. I think that's primary number one is be the person that you're looking for. Don't have all these standards and don't be swiping on people left. Don't be keep swiping left. Oh, they're not good enough. Yada, 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 yada. What are you? Like look in the mirror first and be realistic about what you're bringing to the table. Because I know so many people that have all these things that they want. They have all these really high standards, but the value that they bring themselves is not equating to what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. So bring value, add value to yourself and then you can look for that value in someone else. And I think that goes with a lot of stuff that what you're saying, like be interesting, go get a job, like do all those things that are going to add value to your own If you're socially awkward, realize that and then think, how can I make this better so I can have better conversations? Don't just be like, I'm just socially awkward. Like that's just me. Yeah. Don't get complacent (laughs) with traits that you feel are bad. I feel like that's one thing that I've really seen a lot of and i think we may need to do a separate episode on this because it's yeah. almost turned into like meme culture where like this will be your toxic trait and everyone's just supposed to like deal with that it's like no you deal with it first then we'll deal with it later well, it's just things like, that have been normalized if they can't handle me at my worst yeah. they won't get me at my Marilyn monroe yeah <laughs> yeah like no we're not about that here <laughs> right so like really focus on bringing value to yourself and then you can bring that value to someone else mm. i would say additionally as well like really put effort into your profile Like I know so many people and we kind of touched on it a little bit before, but they don't want to be viewed as trying. They don't want to be like viewed taken too seriously. But like if online dating seems to be like a profitable means for you, really put effort into it. Take some nice photos. Even in real life, though, with your Instagram, because people are going to meet you and then they're going to stalk you. (laughs) Just a little side tip there. Yeah, (laughs) But also it only takes one person. Yes. Like, oh my God. that's comforting. <laughs> that should be comforting. <laughs> it should It only be. takes one. And yeah. it can happen overnight, and then you're married six weeks later. You well, just have no idea. About society, mm-hmm. right? Because society, especially when it comes to looks, is people want to be attractive to everybody. And it's like, unfortunately, that's not the way the world works. Obviously, if you're you have objectively attractive traits, more people are going to find you attractive. But the goal in relationships isn't to be attractive to everybody. It's supposed to be attractive to the person you're with. Mm -hmm. So people need to really get off this kick of, I want everyone to be looking at me all the time and change that mindset because that's a very toxic mindset like when someone sees you they'll see you and that's fine not you don't need all the attention from the guys until you find the right one like the right one will get there and then that should be good enough but the culture has twisted us so hard to place our value on these things and i think that's where a lot of people get discouraged what and even i've been there myself where it's like man no one's really swiping on me like i guess i'm not that valuable i guess no one really wants me yada 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 you go down this weird rabbit trail where you just end up feeling real bad about yourself and it's like our value is not placed on the person we date or any of those things our value is placed on our standing with the lord so when we get stuck in these weird ruts of wanting to be more attractive or wanting to have all these people match us or like us or ask us out, like we're focused on the wrong things, guys. Focus on your actual value, which is in Christ. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I would say that's probably my last piece of advice. And I think that's the most important one because it's way too easy to get wrapped up in these apps and trying to find our value in there when our value is with the Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, any closing thoughts before we wrap this up? I think in general, if you're single, it's okay to tell people you're struggling. Whoa, yeah. Because so many people are just like trying so hard to look like they're not struggling or that they're not having a hard time with their singleness. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to not want to be single. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Like talk to your (laughs) biblical counselor about it or a friend or something if you're struggling with loneliness or whatever. Like you don't have to have this facade of like, oh i'm content <laughs> it's fine right. like that yeah. is annoying <laughs> and the older people you stop telling those people who come to them that it's an idol because they want to be married yeah so don't feel bad for the them. desire <laughs> and also don't feel bad for feeling bad that you're not married it's yeah. okay yeah. to feel whatever you're feeling because if you're called 
if you're not called to single this singleness and of course that's going to affect you literally the bible talks about it so it's not something anyone should act surprised by so yeah. make sure you have a good support group and also if you are a more sensitive person I don't know if I necessarily recommend online dating because you, if you it's don't harsh. get a lot of action, <laughs> your feelings. you might get your it's feelings harsh, hurt. Yo. It's harsh. So just there. make sure you're able to emotionally deal with the negatives as well as whatever positives mm-hmm. can come out of it. That's a great yep. point. Yeah. Being honest with yourself. I mean, knowing what you can handle, that's really important. And yeah, I think that's a great way to say is just like be open with your struggles, be transparent with it because you're only going to end up doing yourself more harm if you aren't talking about those issues that's how satan uses those sins against you is when you're working by yourself mm-hmm. when you're not having other people to lean on when you're trying to deal with everything alone even let just in. letting people set you up oh. like so so many people mm-hmm. are like oh i really want to be married and then they're like let me set you up and they're like no 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 it's like <laughs> why <laughs> like what are you afraid of <laughs> like some just, people are afraid of actually succeeding look of like i don't want to look like i'm trying yeah and it's like I'm not but that you desperate. Are, it's yeah. okay that's to that's be that's a little that's desperate. desperate. It's okay. Yeah. That's how that's how we're wired. We're social creatures. We crave that intimacy. We want that naturally. It's in us. So having this, you know, cliche, like very nonchalant attitude doesn't do you any service. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would just say, you guys mentioned something really important. Just wherever you're at, whether you're single or married, that's where the Lord wants you to be. And I think yep. that's a great place to end it is just because whatever we have and whatever we don't have, guys, is all a gift from the Lord. He's going to bring us into a season when he brings us there. And there's nothing we can do to make that happen faster or slower. We're going to get there when we're going to get there. And it's on the Lord's timing. So we need to pray for the Lord's will, not our own. And just remember that he is providing everything we need for the season that we're in right now. So if you're single, like myself, and you want to be in a relationship, the Lord will bring that to you if he wills that for you. And being okay with wherever you're at is the most important thing. So really being content in him is where we want to draw our focus. Uh, But thank you so much, Aaliyah, for jumping on this episode. It's been a fun talk. If you guys have any fun online dating stories or experiences or anything you want to share with us, comments, questions, message any three of us. All our links will be in the description below. So feel free to reach out. We appreciate you sticking through this episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for weekly uploads. And we will see you all on the next one.